So these significant digits that we're going to use. Our first step is uh, in the measurement. And what we want to do is when we get in measurement, we going to use the whole number of the measurement. So if we weigh something on a digital scale, we're going to use the whole number the scale gives us. If we read an analog thermometer, we want to estimate between the lines to get the most precise value. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but what happens when we start to multiply, divide, add, subtract the numbers that we have? This is where we are really need to know the significant digits and the rules that go along with them. Especially if we start with somebody else's numbers, we have to figure out which, what is significant on their numbers. So all non-zero digits are going to be significant. It's only zeros that are uh, non-significant. And they're not significant. Ah. The zeros are not significant if they're just giving us the magnitude of the number. They're holding the decimal point for us. That means that zeros between non-zero digits are significant because they're not holding the decimal point for us. It means that we've measured that value and its value is zero. Zeros left of non-zero digits are not significant. The reason that we ever see zeros on the left side of a number is if there's a decimal point there. So to have zeros left of the non-zero digits means that there's a decimal point there. So those zeros are just telling us where the decimal point belongs. Zeros right of the non-zero digits are significant only when a decimal point is present. So if there's no decimal point present, those zeros to the right are showing us where the decimal point belongs. So they're holding the decimal point for us. So if there's no decimal point, the zeros are not significant because they're just holding the decimal point for us. But if we have a decimal point somewhere in the number, anywhere in the number, the zeros on the right side of the non-zero digits are not holding the decimal point. So that means that they have been measured and their value is zero. So they are significant. Exact numbers are, are either defined numbers or simple counted numbers. And these have unlimited number of significant digits, which means that they don't affect our significant digits in calculations. So uh, defined numbers, a uh, foot is 12 inches, a uh, kilometer is 1,000 meters. So 2.5 four uh, centimeters one inch are, are all defined quantities. So some examples here, uh, 3,456. We're going to take all those digits, they're all significant. 34,056, we have a zero in there, but it's between nine zeros, so it's going to be counted. So we have five significant digits. 34,560, that zero on the right is only there to show us where the decimal point is. So it is not significant. Generally, uh, the zeros that disappear when we turn a standard number into a scientific notation number are not are not significant. If we want to show that zero on the right is significant, we can put a decimal point there to show that we are counting that zero. 74,000, no decimal point. Those three zeros on the right are not counted. Point zero zero four five seven. while well, the zeros on the left are only to show us where that decimal point is, so they're not counted. So we only have three significant digits there. Point zero zero four five seven zero. Zeros on the left are not counted. Zero on the right should be counted. Well, there's a decimal, there's a decimal point in that number. So yes, we will count that zero on the right. So we have four significant digits. Point zero zero four zero seven zero. So this is showing us um, a variety of zeros here, three types of zeros. The ones on the left show us the decimal point. They're not counted. The one between the four and seven is going to be counted. The one on the right is counted because there's a decimal point in that number. So we end up with four significant digits. So for each type of mathematical operation, we're going to have a different rule for significant digits. We're going to do um, 
three types of mathematical operations. The third type will come on later for logarithms. Uh, we're going to start off with addition subtraction, which is one type of mathematical operation, and multiplication division, another type of mathematical operation. So for addition subtraction, we can use the, on the right side of the number, we can use the decimal places or columns that are significant in all the numbers added or subtracted. On the left side of the number, we're just going to let the numbers do as they want, but on the right side of the number, we're uh, only going to use the columns or decimal places that are significant in all the numbers added or subtracted. So when we add or subtract, we're not worried about total number of significant digits. So the total number of significant digits can change. They can increase or decrease. Now in multiplication division, we're going to limit the number of significant digits in the answer to the smallest number of significant digits in the numbers multiplied or divided. So here we care about number of significant digits and we're going to go with the smallest number of significant digits. Now when we decide on the number of significant digits, we may have to truncate our number. So what we're going to do is we're going to round our last number kept based on the first number cut or truncated. If that first number cut is less than 5, we round down, which means that we just cut it and we don't do anything to the last number kept. If when we cut that number, first number cut is 5 or greater, we're going to round up. That means we add 1 to the last digit that we're keeping. Now when we round, we can't change the magnitude of the number. So we may have to add zeros to hold the magnitude of the number identical. If we run change 741 into two significant digits, that means we're going to go 7, 4, the 1 is the third, we're going to truncate the 1, it's less than 5, we're not going to do anything to the 4, but if we just give 7, 4 as the answer, we change the magnitude from 740 to 74. That's not appropriate. So when we cut that 1 off, we have to put a 0 there, so we have 740, we keep the magnitude of the number. A couple examples here, so our addition example, 145,000 plus 7,400. Well, that hundreds column is significant on the second number, but not the first number. It's not significant for all the numbers, so we're not able to keep the keep in our answer. So the answer is not going to be 152,400. It will just be 152,000. For subtraction, 0 0.0015 to 3, 6 decimal places, minus point zero 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 four five, five decimal places. Well, the 6 decimal places is only significant in the first answer, so we are only allowed to keep 5 decimal places in our answer. So instead of getting point zero zero one zero seven three, six 6 decimal places, we're going to truncate that 3 off, and we'll be left with point zero zero one zero seven five decimal places. For multiplication, 245 times 0 0.47. Uh, 245 has three significant digits, 0.47 is two. Uh, our calculator will give us uh, 115.15. We don't want to keep that number. We look at significant digits, we say that we're allowed to have two, so we need it rounded down to a two. The third digit is 5, so when we truncate that, we're going to add 1 to the second digit. So uh, that 1 turns into 2. But we have to make sure we keep the magnitude, so we can't just have 12 as their answer. It's going to be 120, 120, to keep the magnitude the same. So 
some more examples here. So for multiplying uh, three sides of a rectangle, three sides of a rectangular box together, uh, 27.5, 15, 14.3, our calculator gives us 58, 98.75 cubic centimeters. We look at what we have. We have three significant digits, two and three. So our answer is really limited to two significant digits, the smallest of those numbers. So we look at our number. The third number is nine. We're going to add one to the second number. Last one we're keeping. So our 58 turns into 59. We need two zeros there to keep the magnitude the same. So 5,900 cubic centimeters. If we uh, weigh seven coins, we want an average mass. Uh, where mass is 87.62, we're dividing by seven coins. Well, seven coins is a counted number. So seven coins is unlimited in significant digits. So what we have is four significant digits from our 87.62. And we get this long number from our calculator. We want to, want to round that down to four significant digits. So we end up with 12.52. And this little uh, thought process show the effect of significant digits. So if we do a 0.5 squared, we get the um, 0.25. Point 0.5 is only one significant digit, so we would round that down to one significant digit, which would be point 0.3. Point 0.50 is two significant digits. We square that, we end up with a point 0.25, two significant digits. So what happens if point 0.5 um, is one significant digit? That means it has a plus or minus one value into it. So it could be point 0.4 or point 0.6. Uh, we square these, the range could be from 0.16 to 0.36. Well, obviously the first digit is the one that's changing. So the first digit is the only significant digit. Well, on the 0.50, the second, there should be a plus or minus error in that uh, second decimal place. That means the true value of the number might be between 0.49 and 0.51. We square these and we end up with 0.2401 and 0 0.2601. So we see the first digit is identical, 0 0.2. Second digit changes, 4 or 6. So that means our um, we have two significant digits on that. So uh, significant digits is going to be all the non-variable digits and the first digit that has some uncertainty associated with it. And doing this process of putting in the actual range of possible values is uh, called sensitivity analysis. We can use this to uh, check the error on various equations that um, 